Hey everyone, uh, it's great to be here. You heard James talk about security, and you heard earlier today Ken talked about uh, the evolution of observability. But before we go into how AI is really changing observability, let's look at the evolution of observability. You know, you've heard about monitoring when data centers were in existence, which still they are. There was a lot of manual siloed effort around trying to collect data and being able to solve these problems manually. But once you had the advent of cloud, what that did was it abstracted the different layers, whether the infrastructure layer, the application layer, the services, and so on, which made it really, really hard to solve problems. And so the industry evolved into observability, which is being able to bring all the signals together, which is metrics, logs, and traces. So that was an inflection point. But we feel that today, we are at another inflection point for observability. Ken talked a little bit about the diagnosis, the detection, the diagnosis, and the remediation, and how it's all going to be more and more towards the auto, the auto detection, the auto diagnosis, and the auto remediation. And we feel that it's about AI-powered uh, observability. That's the transformation we are seeing in the market. And what does that really take? What that takes really is the ability to get all the data, to be able to process that data effectively, unify that, and be able to apply AI to it. And so you've heard about AI ops and things of that sort. Let's take a look at what, are, what is it that the SRE teams can actually get now. So with Elastic, the way we focused on observability is really the building block, which is the Elastic Search and S-Ray. That's, that's what it's powered by. And so what it lets you do is, First of all, get all the data, which is the data you see on the left-hand side. And it's operational data as well as the business data. Because it's no good for you to just keep on looking at operational data to figure out where is it that you should prioritize. Should you look at a particular problem or not? And so that's really, really critical and important. And we are able to get this data at high dimensionality and high cardinality. So that's really important. And once you're able to get that data, it's being able to apply the context. So you're able to get the context. If you're looking at logs, what are the metrics and traces related to it, and vice versa. And so those are the things that are really important. And once you apply AI, it's about being able to then get actionable insights. All of that is to make sure that the SRE and the ops teams are effective. They're able to solve the problems much, much faster, and you're able to break the silos. So let's take a little bit of a look at you know, what is it that observability delivers as far as the AI capabilities are concerned. So out of the box, we are able to give you, you know, things related to latency correlations, any sort of anomaly detections. We're able to look at log categorizations as well as log spike and things like that, which Ken showed you earlier today. In addition to that, what we believe Elastic provides is really an a white box sort of a model where you have 300 plus, 100 plus machine learning models, but you can customize them. You can customize them to the data that matters to you. And then, of course, it's about the generative AI. It's how do you go and move away from the context switching, from the manual data chasing to an interactive data experience where you're able to get the answers that really, really matter to you. So, James talked about the security. Similar to security, we have the AI assistant for observability. As Ken mentioned earlier, we are in tech preview. And instead of talking a lot about it, I'll actually turn it over to Bahubali to maybe walk us through a demo and tell us what is it that it can do for us. You know, I have, a, I have my infrastructure, my applications. I'm getting metrics, logs, traces, and actually profiling data too. So help us how we get to the root cause without the swivel cheering. Absolutely. Um, so I can uh, switch over. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to go through a scenario. You saw it this morning. Ken took a little bit of thunder away from us on this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a little more details. And like Guggen said, we're going to go through it from the, from the um, viewpoint of the SRE. You know, <clears throat> as you're managing your applications, infrastructure, and other components, you're going to live and die effectively by alerts, right? And when you take a look at an alert, in particular this one, it just says, hey, you've crossed the threshold. Too many logs have come in for a specific time frame. 
what do you generally do in Elastic, right? You're going to go in and take a look at the alert details, and then we're going to do what Gungan just said, swivel chair analysis, right? You're going to go to discover. You're going to go look at this information. You're going to go to APM. But over the last few releases, what we've actually done in Elastic Observability is enable more contextual enable, uh, information to be provided for you. In this particular case, we've got a threshold being uh, breached or exceeded. And while we provide that information, we're also giving you what, what I like to call more contextual information. And specifically, in this case, it's log rate analysis. And that takes the spike, analyzes it, analyzes it statistically, and it's a machine learning job that's constantly running. So we're smart enough to bring that information for you so you don't have to go to the machine learning uh, uh, component and take a look and, at it. And, and just to add to that, you know, I think the big thing which is important also is that this is a lot of data. So it's really not possible to manually process any of this, or you're going to be probably doing it after the fact. What you're seeing here is before the fact that we're able to actually really, really hone in on what the problem is really quickly. Right. And so now I have an analysis. As an SRE, I should kind of know what some of this is. Honestly, I probably don't. Contrary to popular belief, SREs don't know everything, right? <laughs> and they'll admit it. In this case, it says, hey, there's something around PG Bench. OK? I kind of know it's probably related to Postgres. So I'm going to go to the AI assistant and ask it to effectively give me some more information. Now, we pre-can a query. And what we do is we bundle up all of that analysis that we just did and the threshold crossing information, send that over to the LLM. In this case, we're configured it against Azure. We can configure it on OpenAI. And it goes and it obviously gives us an analysis. And rightfully so, you can see it's, notif it's identified as a Postgres database issue running on Kubernetes. And if you look at some of the data, it's running on containers. And it gives us some recommendations. However, I still don't know what PG Bench is, right? Now, the one thing that I want to note in here is that we didn't just go and talk to the LLM and say, OK, here's a query. We had a little bit of an exchange, and we sent it a list of functions of what it can use to actually ask for more information in private data that we kind of talked about earlier in the day. right? So it can actually utilize those functions to ask us, and we'll show you that in the chat as I kind of walk through it. Right. And I think the, the big thing, I think, to remember here is that, as you can see from this uh, demo, it's all interactive, and it's natively built into the product. So it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in alerts or in logs or metrics or traces. You're able to get this data right away. So as you notice, when we get into the chat, it actually brings the context over from the first query we did. So now the LLM has some of that information. And we obviously want to know what PG Bench is. OK, so that's a simple query that's done on the LLM. Uses its trained information, gives us an answer. However, as an SRE, I want to know, hey, is this incident really important for me to look at? What would I ask, right? And I'm going to ask, what is the impact of this, right? And obviously, we did it on a specific day because that is the day where all the data is. Now, what's happening in this situation is the um, LLM has all that data about the issue, and it determines there's an application here, and it's running on Kubernetes. So most likely, it's I need to get a list of those services. And it has, remember what I said, it has a list of the functions it can use to effectively get more information. It says, hey, give me the list of services against it. We actually, and if you notice, it will create a request. Give me a list of services in a specific time frame. We return it, that list of services. And in there, we give it some information such as criticality, right? which environment it's on, et cetera. And then it actually says, OK, you know what? I want to get information on the checkout service because it's determined that that's probably going to be a very critical service in that application. And it asks for uh, information around it. And in this case, it takes a look and says, OK, you've got a high failure rate around this time frame. And because you've had that, it, you probably have an impact on your revenue right, from this issue. Yeah, and, and I think that's an important point to po uh, point out, because oftentimes we are sort of, as teams, uh, operations teams, stuck in the world of what's the CPU memory and other things. And the qu bigger question is, you're running your infrastructure. You're running your applications to solve a particular business problem. And so that's where, when we first talked about, it's really, really important that you're able to connect 
your operational data with the business data, with the right set of metadata so you are able to actually really go into the details that we're going to go into here. All right. So now I understand it is impacting. But you know, as an S3, I'm just going to double check, and I should. Yeah. All right. Let's see what's the revenue what, impact. What's, what's, the, what's the impact on my revenue? Now, notice what we're asking it. We're specifically asking it to visualize my revenue data, right? And we ask it something specific. We said, I've told you information about this before. What that means is in, in the knowledge base that is set up with our Elastic AI Assistant, I think you saw Shai's diagram where you talked about business data. We have a knowledge base that's set up in addition to help that LLM get additional information. So what it does is says, oh, you know what? I'm going to ask you to recall specific bits of information for me. And that is going to be around revenue, because I don't have that information in my LLM, right? And it asks for that. It's called a function recall. And then this is where we um, use Elser, go into the knowledge base, and get the top results. And if we take a look at those results, it'll show you how we've already added that information. And now we're sending it to the LLM saying, if you ask for revenue data, it's in this index. And if you're looking for information about it, it's in a specific field. So now the LLM obviously gets that information. And what it does is it creates a function call for us to graph it. We're not sending any revenue data over here, right? It just tells us to graph it. And it uses the lens function to go and graph it and sends a JSON formatted request. And that's how you get the graph. And at this point, I can take this. And if you notice, it just says, here's a visualization. It doesn't really have any of the data because it is sensitive and it's revenue data. But I can take this now, and I can actually bring it into Lens, and I can edit it. And then I can take it and add it into a Kibana dashboard. Right. I mean, which could be a dashboard that maybe your execs are really interested in and interested in on a second by second or an hour by hour basis in terms of how you're doing as a business. And what are your SLOs and SLIs are looking like? Right? Yeah. So now, maybe let's like, look at uh, some of the other capabilities too we have, right? Yeah. Around. Now, before I do that, I just want to note something, which is where is it accessible? First and foremost, it's accessible pretty much everywhere in observability. On the upper right hand corner on 810, which was released last week, you can actually go there and just access it. Now, there's two bits of configuration, very simple. The knowledge base automatically adds it. And what we didn't point out is that you add information to that. So as an example, if you want the SRE to solve a problem in a specific way, i.e. in a runbook, you can add something similar to that into the knowledge base. Okay? And then you just set up your connector. It's that simple. It's a some point and click, and you're off and running. Now, a couple of locations where we've added it to make life easier for the SRE. Obviously, in this past scenario, we were looking at services. So if we go to our APM and our service map, we look at, let's say, the product catalog service, which is showing red on that map. We know there's a lot of things happening. And there are definitely some errors that it's seeing. And as we go into the errors, and we particularly picked one, we get some information. And this has been around in Elastic for a while. But this is where we've added an ability to utilize the AI assistant uh, as an SRE to get more information about that particular error. Because I'm not going to understand what the developers have done from a code perspective, right? right? And then as we did in the previous case, it's going to analyze it and give me some reasons of why that error could be occurring. And I can go around and start having a chat again, all again in that one location. Yeah. So maybe talk a little bit about uh, you know, some of the host-related capabilities or even profiling and uh, how, how we're actually con continuing to connect the different pieces. Yeah, so that's a great question. So um, we talk about profiling for a second. We yeah. just released the GA last week. Do you want to give us a quick overview on profiling? Oh, yeah. So profiling, for those who don't know, this is about continuous profiling, right? So this is giving you level, uh, visibility into your infrastructure as, your, as well as your application with zero instrumentation and very low overhead. So this is really, really complementary to APM, which is you need to instrument the language. You need to instrument your code. Here, you don't need to do any of that to be able to get that visibility. And so you'll see here that you can actually really quickly pinpoint areas or function calls that are taking up resources that, are, that can be probably optimized, which then obviously makes your application much more efficient, but reduces the footprint as well and from an infrastructure standpoint. 
Yeah, so <clears throat> this is sort of what it shows you. Now, like Gagan said, there's zero instrumentation. It's running in a kernel, and it can give you all the information about your infrastructure and the code in third-party libraries that you're using. And in this graph, we see that Python, in particular, across our entire deployment, is taking up a significant amount of CPU space uh, capacity. So let's just investigate that further. And what we can do is we can actually look at all the different deployments that are heavily using Python. And we notice that there's one that we'd like to take a look at, and it's a, um, <coughs> it's a hashing service. And I've already brought it up on a, another window. And as I go into it in more detail, we get into what's called a flame graph. And this gets into the details of any of the functions that are being used in that service, particular to Python, obviously. And we can actually drill down into uh, a specific function. And what the graph is showing me is the percentage of CPU being used. What are we trying to do? Reduce the amount of resources and optimize the code so that I can save money and make it better performing. So let's take one of these uh, functions. And as we look at more information, we can obviously go through some of the important components here, like total CPU, uh, you know, what it's utilizing, and even how much time it's taking. And we even give you core CO2 emissions. Yeah. But with the AI Assistant, I can actually ask it, how would you suggest optimizing this function? Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's amazing. So hopefully that gave you a glimpse of where Elastic is headed from an observability perspective, how it's bringing together AI in terms of the generative AI as well as the broader AI capabilities that we have. Um, and so with that, I think we're out of time here. So thanks, everyone.